Horizon 2020, the SME instrument. This webcast provides an overview of the SME instrument in Horizon 2020, an instrument aimed at small and medium-sized enterprises. Let's start with that strange word instrument. Instrument is a formal name given to a set of rules for a grant that is available from the European Union, the EU. The SME instrument is a new type of grant, available for the first time in Horizon 2020, which is the EU's Research and Innovation Funding Programme for the years 2014 to 2020. SMEs can of course participate in many parts of Horizon 2020 under the same rules as any other organisation. But for SMEs only, there is this additional type of grant. The objective of the SME instrument described here is taken from the Horizon 2020 specific programme. The specific programme is part of the legislation agreed between the European Council of Ministers, the representatives of the EU member states and the European Parliament. These two together decide the priorities for EU level research and innovation funding. Important points to note in this objective are Firstly, the focus is on innovation, not research. By innovation, the EU means bringing an idea for a new product, a new process or a new service to industrial readiness, for example by developing prototypes or testing them in real-world situations. As a result, most projects funded will be close to market. Secondly, there is a clear emphasis on commercialisation. So the aim of EU support is not only to help with the cost of technical work, it also addresses the development of plans for commercialisation, including assistance in raising loans and venture capital. Third, and most important, the SME instrument aims to stimulate breakthrough innovations. The funding is not for the mundane, everyday improvements which businesses make continuously. Instead, it targets the high-risk but high-potential innovations which might disrupt existing markets and suppliers or create entirely new markets. Another part of the legislation states that each project funded must have a clear European dimension. So the focus is on innovation at the EU level. This means that the EU grants will fund developments new to Europe and the SMEs involved will at the minimum be targeting European markets. So let's turn to the basic rules. Only SMEs can apply for funding. SME has the usual meaning, fewer than 250 employees, plus a financial criterion, either turnover below 50 million euro or assets below 43 million euro. And finally, independence. It doesn't form part of a larger group. As well as being SMEs, proposers must be for profit organisations. This is so that if the project is successful, the SME can raise capital and grow quickly to take full advantage of the potential created. The target is innovative SMEs with a strong ambition to develop, grow and internationalise. A single SME can apply for funding if it chooses to. Alternatively, a consortium of SMEs can apply together. Other types of organisations can be brought into the project by the SMEs. They could be research or technology providers, including universities, or they could be potential users of the resulting products or services to give practical guidance on market requirements or to test prototypes. However, the users or technology providers must be involved by the SMEs through a subcontract or similar arrangement. As I mentioned a few moments ago, projects will usually be close to market and this means that EU funding will be 70% of costs. 
A simple illustration of the funding is given later in this webcast. A typical project would receive a grant of between 0.5 million euro and 2.5 million euro and have a duration of between 12 and 24 months. Finally, the bottom up work programme. This is EU jargon. It means that SMEs can propose a project in any area of science or technology. However, the EU funding, about 3 billion euros over the seven years of the programme, will come from two parts of Horizon 2020. Societal challenges and enabling and industrial technologies. This could possibly narrow the range of topics which can be funded. We will discuss this later in the webcast. The SME instrument provides support to SMEs in three phases. The first phase is a feasibility study. The aim here is to establish the technical viability of the proposed innovation or its economic viability or maybe both of them. A wide range of activities might be covered. They include technical proof of concept, assessment of user requirements, market analysis such as size and segmentation and potential competition, and patent and similar searches. This phase might also include searching for potential customers willing to collaborate in the main development. Phase two is the main project. This will normally consist of activities such as prototype development, testing or demonstrating the new product, process or service. The final phase addresses commercialisation. In this phase, the EU will provide free advice and help in particular in assessing private capital, either venture capital or bank loan, and also support in finding new markets and distributors across Europe. Of course, not every SME will follow all three phases. For example, a patent search conducted in phase one might identify intellectual property which can be licensed in to address the SME's needs, so a second phase for development is not needed. In other cases, the SME might have already established the feasibility of its idea and so will propose a phase two project directly. Earlier, I said the SME instrument will fund close to market projects. What does the EU mean to close to market? For this, they use TRLs, Technology Readiness Levels, as a guide. TRLs have been in use for many years in the defence and aerospace industries, including the European Space Agency. They are also used by the NATO in the medical field and other sectors such as oil and gas. The EU versions of TRLs is shown in this slide. Using TRLs, the EU considers TRL6 to TRL9 to be close to market, so the EU expects projects funded under the SME instrument to fall in this area. This table shows the funding and help available to SMEs for the three phases. In the first phase, the feasibility study will be funded through a lump sum of €50,000. Lump sum means a price for a job. If the SME completes the work, the €50,000 will be paid no matter what the actual cost of the study. Also in phase one, a member of the Enterprise Europe network can be available if the SME requires it to carry out an innovation management gap analysis. The Enterprise Europe Network, or EEN, is part funded by the EU, part by national or regional authorities to help SMEs with opportunities at the European level. Based on the EEN assessment or its own analysis, the SME can opt to receive help from a business coach, which is provided free of charge. The EC is preparing a list of coaches from which the SME can choose. The coaches will have expertise in areas such as strategic planning, human resources, 
innovation management, IPR, financial management and business improvement. Phase 2 is the main project. Funding here is provided based on the actual costs incurred according to the normal Horizon 2020 rules. So the SMEs will need to keep records of all costs incurred including for personnel, travel, equipment and materials used. Further help from EEN for administrative matters and business coaches is avail available in this phase also. In phase three, the focus is on commercialisation. No EU funding is provided to the SMEs, but EEN is available to advise on access to investment capital, whether debt or equity, and also on finding new markets and distributors across Europe. Here's a little more detail on the Phase 2 funding. The first column shows the cost categories normally used in a proposal. Personnel, other direct costs, subcontracting and overheads, which are also known as indirect costs. Example A lists only two direct costs, personnel costs amounting to €800,000 and other direct co costs of €200,000. Together, they add up to €1 million. Euro. Overheads are calculated by a standard Horizon 2020 rate of 25% of direct costs, that is €250,000 in example A. So total costs are €1,250,000, which means the grant will be €870,000, 70% of total costs. Example B shows a similar cost profile, except for the inclusion of subcontracting, for example to a research and technology provider who will carry out part of the work. You will notice that the 25% overhead is not added to the cost of the subcontracting. So in column B, total costs are €2,250,000 and EU funding amounts to €1,575,000. The EC has rules concerning subcontracts whose costs are being claimed. One rule, used in most cases, is that subcontracts can only cover a limited part of the project. For the SME instrument, this rule is removed. Subcontracts can be a major part of the project. However, in Phase 2, the SME must justify its choice of subcontractor in terms of best value for money. Now let's turn up to the matter of the work programme. Earlier, I said that the work programme for the SME instrument was bottom up. This is EU jargon, which means that SMEs can propose a project in any area of science or technology. The bottom up nature is contained in the legislation in the extract shown on this slide. However, I also mentioned that the EU funding will come from two parts of Horizon 2020 societal challenges and enabling and industrial technologies and warned that this could possibly narrow the range of topics which can be funded. So what is the real situation? Can an SME really propose any topic? To answer this, we first need a look at the overall structure of Horizon 2020. The pie chart shows the overall breakdown of the Horizon 2020 budget, including the shares for societal challenges and industrial leadership. Societal challenges divides into seven programmes for areas such as health, energy and transport. Industrial leadership divides into three programmes, one titled Enabling and Industrial Technologies divides into four sub-programmes called ICT, Information and Communication Technologies, NMP, Nanotechnologies, Advanced Materials and Production, Biotechnology and Space. Each of the 11 programmes or sub-programmes has its own section of the work programme, divided into many topics, and each has its own topic or topics for the SME instrument. 
What do these 11 topics of the SME instrument actually say? Seven of the 11 on the left hand of this slide follow the bottom-up philosophy in the specific programme, which I quoted earlier. Despite variations in language, all say that any topic within their remit which is described in a specific programme would be acceptable. The four remaining areas have taken a narrower view of what can be supported. The security programme limits support to urban soft targets and critical infrastructures. The food programme is constrained to about two thirds of its total scope, sustainable food security and blue growth. And societies, in fact, has no budget for the SME instrument until 2015. The most extreme deviation from the bottom-up philosophy is in the health programme, where only one topic is allowed, although the topic is wide in scope. The health programme is also unique amongst the 11 in funding research projects with 100% funding, rather than innovation projects with 70% funding. So it is important to read the precise wording of the work programme in these four areas. The thread that connects all stages of the process for participating in the SME instrument is the Business Innovation Plan. The Phase 1 proposal starts with an initial business plan plus an outline of the work to be done in the feasibility phase. The proposal is limited to 10 pages in length, to which are added administrative forms and description of the proposers. The proposal will be evaluated by at least two independent experts in competition with similar proposals from across Europe. Only the highest scoring proposals will be funded. For those who are funded, the output of Phase 1 will be a feasibility report and an updated business plan, Business Innovation Plan 2. This will form the basis of the Phase 2 proposal together with the costed project plan. The Phase 2 proposal, this time 30 pages in length, plus forms and description of the proposers, will again be judged by independent experts, again in competition with other proposals from across Europe. For winners of a Phase 2 grant, the project will deliver the technical results of the work and also a commercialisation plan or business innovation plan 3. The intention is that the business innovation plan 3 is investor ready so that the SMEs can now approach venture capitalists or banks for funding. Here are the cut-off dates for proposals to the SME instrument. Proposals for Phase 1 and Phase 2 can be submitted at any time. All those submitted before a cut-off date will be judged together. For Phase 1 proposals, the EC plans to announce the results within two months of the cut-off dates. Grant agreements for the winners should follow a month later. For Phase 2 proposals, the results should be announced within four months of the cut-off dates, with a grant agreement for the winners to follow in two further months. For more information on the SME instrument, visit this address on the Horizon 2020 participant portal. Select Funding Opportunities, then Calls. Then tick the box Innovation in SMEs. That brings us to the end of this webcast. We hope you found it useful and informative. Good luck with your proposals.